In the third step, we identified goals and policies that would enable this, this connected forest condition. In the fourth step, we want to create a future land use map. And that's a required part of the town planning process, which is to, to really develop a map of, of what you want where into the future. We often recommend to towns to think about this map as a conceptual picture of what they want their future to be. So it's not necessarily a representation of what their town is today or what their zoning regulations specify. We ask towns to think about it as a vision for the future. Identify general land use areas and their associated purposes as what you want them to be in the future. And that's an important piece of this because it ensures that there's an integration of this pattern of forest blocks and connectors into all of the other goals that we've been planning for and that it's spatially explicit. Large forest blocks tend to show up there. The connectors in particular don't often show up in the, in the future land use plan. And so you won't actually maintain this, this forced pattern of blocks and connectors unless it gets into the, the future land use map. So there's an opportunity here to get beyond large zones and, and, and really plan at a more micro level of where forests connect to one another. It's really beneficial to be able to identify on your future land use map where those forested areas are that we want to be able to maintain into the future so that then subsequently anything that happens in those areas can um, be in alignment with what that future vision is. The also necessary part of that future land use map is it basically sets the foundation for any zoning changes into the future. It gets to be a little bit harder then to decide well what are the policies that we'd like to promote and so we have published uh, community strategies for Vermont's Forest and Wildlife Guide that's full of different regulatory or non-regulatory strategies or policies that towns could consider and then put into their town plan as, as action steps. As we think about planning for land use across a whole town, we're trying to engage as many different people and as many different types of people within the town boundary as we possibly can. A great way to do that is through engaging different groups and engaging in partnerships in particular. There's no rule that says it's just a planning commission or just a conservation commission that's responsible for doing the work. Local partnerships are really good bases of knowledge um, for what's on the ground as well as other people who may be in the future able to implement certain actions, actions and um, put forth policies that your community has developed as part of the, the planning process. They also are able to um, be uh, an essential role within the um, community outreach and engagement and reaching out to a lot of the people who may be underserved in the community. All plans and all regulations start at the Planning Commission, they end at the Select Board. So Select Boards are going to be important parts of this conversation. So be talking to the Select Board, figure out what the Select Board is willing to do and not do. Which actually brings up another, uh, another important point, how important it is to s select things that are actually achievable <laughs> and to, to really ensure that, that the tool that's chosen is doable over a few year period, that the town has the capacity to make it happen and then can, in the implementation step, can set people to, as responsible for making that happen and assign milestones that will allow for that to, to happen in a, in a reasonable time frame. There's, there's never like a silver bullet that you invent something. Um, you know, you, we, we utilize the mapping and the language in our town plan from, from earlier days, earlier plans. We, we made it better. We added bits and pieces to it, and we tried to we tried to um, draw a picture of what was most important. But it wasn't as if you know we said we're going to sit down and just figure this out from scratch. You know, you're always building on what the community's past vision is and where you think it's going in the future. We have a lot of towns where most of the town is rural residential in in terms of a plan, 
And so it doesn't look any different out here in the big blocks of forest than it looks along the roads if you were to look at their maps. Well, that means that you want people to build out here in the forest just like you want them to build along your roads. And if you don't mean that, make a different map. Make a map that says less out here, more over here. And make a rule that says less out here, more over here. And that way, you don't have to wait until somebody comes along and you go, well, I never thought that that person would sell that lot and then this person would come in. Well, what crazy person would build out there? Well, the person who looked at your rules and plans that said, they'll let me do it. Much of the forest and the wildlife that is in the forest, they don't adhere to municipal boundaries. So it's really valuable to kind of look beyond those boundaries and see how they could be working with towns to make sure that any policies that they have about protecting forest land will then be kind of compatible with the neighboring towns. So then those um, policies and goals will actually be able to be um, implemented on a broader level and have those greater benefits that everybody is hoping for.